Okay, here's a test setup to measure if the MK2 heat bed will operate about the same way on AC as it operated on DC. It probably will, but I want to test it anyways. Um, I have an auto transformer over here. Swing this around. Over there. Sitting at zero volts. Turned on, starting to buzz. Have a, a DVM set to measure AC voltage, and I have an AMP probe up there set to measure continuous AC current, and I've got the board sitting right there. I still only have one quarter of the circuit because I don't want to get a lot of amps at this time flowing. Uh, so we should. What I'm hoping to see is with 12 volts. This cranked up to 12 volts AC. Will I see um, about two and a half amps when this guy is setting about 12 volts? And that, of course, will measure to 12 volts. And see how this thing heats up. This is just a um, test for S&G purposes. But here we go. I'm going to start cranking this voltage up. So now we're already probably, yeah, 5 volts. And we're already showing 1 amp going through there. So I don't want to go over 2.5. So I will crank this guy up to 12 volts. And I'm hoping to see if Ohm's Law is correct on AC. I should see about 2.5 amps of current around there. And a board should act as it would had I not have that trace over there cut and have all four circuits, parallel circuits, in place. So right now, we are st still hanging around 5 volts at 1 amp. This is like totally unregulated. Um, but this is the next step for me. So let's crank it up a little more. Okay, we're going up to about halfway point here. That's kind of hard to get to. Okay, so we're somewhere around 6 volts, I guess. Okay. So now what we want to do is, uh, let's see, it's starting to get warm. Of course, it's cold. It's 30 degrees and increasing kind of quickly. And of course over here it's cold because that trace over there is cut. Okay, let's see. Okay, this light ain't doing too good of us, is it? Okay, so we are showing 32 degrees here. 33. You can't see that, can you? do this okay so we're showing 33 there wire 33 there 34 it's probably 34 here and it is and this is going to be cold and it is okay so still 1.1 let me get the voltage up a little more we don't know what the hell's going to happen here so we might make a big fuse it's looking like it should so far okay look at this 1123 2.4 amps I was kind of thinking we'll be at 2.5 at 12 this thing ought to start burning Okay, there's two and a half amps and eleven seven, so it's acting like it wants like it should. Let's see if I can get this up a little bit more. I think this old variac has got some crusty wiper windings. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so we're at twelve point one volts and we're seeing two and a half amps. So that would tell me that if I had the circuit connected 
it, well, it's not connected. Every time right now, two and a half amps at 12 volts is 1224. 30 watts, that uh, quarter of the board is dissipating, which means that if I solder that trace, it should be a 120 watt bed, heat bed, which kind of jives. Okay, so now um, I'm going to say we're going to start cooking here pretty good now. Yeah, we're up to 60 degrees C. And let's see. Let's see, 62, but we're constantly warming up. So what I wanted to see is... Danza mentioned in earlier... Well, earlier in the thread that you got to be careful with some of these boards that they may be plated through and to tell if it's a plated through board using that would be etched to be using like the subtractive method of plating a board versus the additive method um, that they recommend to have and they're saying a plated through might have hot spots and so forth well I did look at the two pads where the 14 gauge wire goes in and I could see plating in there so this is an etched board I feel with the quality of the board just by what I see that it's gonna it's gonna perform pretty good I won't know till I get the trace fixed but I think because the screen the mask the traces underneath a, a magnifying glass uh, looks good so I think the plating department probably did a good job. So I just want to see for myself what this now it now I know it is an etch board, how it's going to perform. Right now the current is two four, and we're going to go ahead and check the. I'm looking at seventy five degrees C. Seventy six, seventy two four. Now if I go over here. I'm seeing 60, 70. I go over here. I'm seeing 77, 78. If I go over here, uh, I'm seeing 80. I'm seeing. It all depends on whether you get straight up and down on this thing. Plus the spot size, the IR, I might be an inch. And if I fall off the board, it definitely changes to me. That's, well, what's going on there? It's 71, but I, don't, I think I'm hitting a wire. 78, 80, 80. I know this sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. 81. 80, oh yeah, here, 80, I think it's pretty, this obviously is going to be cold, it should start warming up from convection a little bit, not much, okay, so where are we at, we fell off the board, we're at 82, 80, it's me, it's not the heat pad, 81, Got this sitting on a piece of drywall, so I don't uh, get my start pulling my laminate off my workbench. Okay, so I'm seeing a pretty constant 84. I'm not gonna be able to show you because when I do, I tilt it and it gets all screwed up. The reading, but it is it seems pretty consistent. Except down there, but I think it's this guy. I'm seeing, seeing, seeing 80. What am I seeing here now? 82, 85, 83. So just heating up. Current for some reasons went down a little bit. Uh, let's see. Yes, it will go down. That's what we just proved on our last video. 
The voltage stayed the same. The current's dropping because as the traces heat up, the resistance is going up. And as the resistance goes up, the current's going to go down. So that jives. That 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 kind of helps the other video because there's more current going through there. There's more heat being generated. I think I was only going to get about 60 degrees C last time. This, this baby is now at 80, 86. It's really hard. The way to do this would be for me to solder that trace and do it again. But the, what the cool thing is, what I wanted to find out is with the transformers, the AC transformers at 12 volts, if I had a 120 watt transformer laying around, I didn't want to uh, bog down my power supply, my DC power supply, or it crapped out or whatever. I could run this on, a, say, a floor mounted transformer fixed at 12 volts. You might even get one that has taps and crank it up a little bit and then push it to maybe 12 and a half, 13, 14 volts. I don't know. But if you can, this all the time, I'd crank it up and just cook it, but that ain't going to happen. So, anyways, that's what I wanted to show you. And it looks like this thing will operate the same way on AC as DC preliminarily. Okay, thank you. Take care.